Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. Today's cards are gonna be using the Regency Park DSP and the Sentimental Park and Petal Park bundles. One comes, Petal Park comes with the punch and here it is. And the Sentimental Park comes with the Sentimental Park dies. So we're gonna be doing a six by six one sheet wonder using this beautiful paper that has all kinds of florals and bright bold colors and then patterned geometric prints small prints um, really nice accenting and they do pair well nice together like if you would see like say you would do like these together look nice or like this looks nice with this or this would not look nice with either of these <laughs> So anyhow, um, this one sheet wonder I'm going to show you it uses a six by six and I kind of uh, took a couple different one sheet wonders I saw on Pinterest so this is not totally my original idea. I think cutting this one into two triangles um, from a pattern I saw on Pinterest there. So um, please know that I am just like you and I love to watch other people and see what other kinds of fun things, but there are a lot of different one sheet wonders out there. So what I'm going to do is I am using uh, four different patterns of paper because I'm gonna make four cards out of this using one, two, three, four, and then these are gonna be used as well. Now, whenever I do that, I'm going to cut all of my papers at the same time. So that would mean I could make 16 cards out of these four pieces. Now, I will say that the one pattern that I am using, I have used, I don't want to show you the end product yet, but I have used so much. And it's this pattern here with the balmy blue and the petal pink, but I'm I've used every piece of that in like three different packs. I have done a shoebox swap with it. I have done a class card with it. And now I am going to show you my one sheet wonder. This one sheet wonder are the four cards that we did at our Lucky Hand online event. So the people who signed up for that, we played our game Lucky Hand. And then we used our card kits that I sent out that you'll be seeing here to make these cards. Okay, so what we're gonna do first here is I'm gonna put them all together and get my trimmer out. And you will see all these measurements, this template, uh, the colors products I use on my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com. Underneath the YouTube description, you'll see visit my blog here, press that link, it'll take you over to cindyleebdesigns.com and you can see additional photos and everything. And also on my blog site, you will see um, links to my online store and also underneath the YouTube description. So what we're gonna do is, it really doesn't matter since these are random patterns here, and I hope you have enough light here. Maybe that light's a little better. Uh, it's random patterns, so you don't really have to make it uh, directional. So what we're gonna do is take that six by six, put it at the top of my trimmer. This is wind tape, I get it on Amazon. Reads right to left. It just makes it easier for me to see there. So what we're gonna do is make a five and a half. So looking at this template, we want a five and a half wide for all of them. So we're just gonna go over to five and a half. And remember, I would have been using four pieces here, but I'm faking you out and pretending that there's another fourth piece in there because I already have that piece I'm gonna use. Okay, because since you get four out of there. Now you could do one, one piece of paper and make all your cards the same, but I wanted the people in the online lucky hand game to get a real feel of how pretty the paper is. So they got four different patterns. So I cut it this way. Okay. So we're going to put, um, five and a half and we are going to cut off these strips right here. Okay. And we're going to set those aside because we could be using those on our card. Okay. Now five and a half. Now we want to turn, this is the five and a half. We want to turn and put this six inch side up here and we want to cut at two inches. So here we are cutting at two inches. Two 
two inches. Now we've got three two inches, but technically there's a fourth one, remember. Then we're gonna go two and three fourths, because this is two inches, and now two and three fourths. So two and three quarters. We're gonna make that other cut. There we go. And then that leaves us with a one and a quarter. Okay, so now we're gonna put all our pieces out here. And like I said, you do not have to, you do not have to, like you could use these and, oh, I forgot. We have to cut these into two and three quarters as well. These two and three quarter strips, we cut them into two squares that two are two and three quarters. See here, we had a two inch, then we had two and three quarters, but we cut that two and three quarters in half. I was thinking, I'm missing something here. So we just stick that back in there, make sure I'm cutting the two and three quarters one, and put that in there, and cut that. Okay, now that is one, and then this goes here. So I wanna cut this one, I wanna cut this one here in half on the diagonal. So I'm just gonna put that into my trimmer and put a two diagonals, because it's non-directional, it won't matter. And you're going to put those in there, put them each of these diagonal corners, it can be either way, unless you have a, di uh, a directional paper. Oop, I almost moved that, because this might be a little trickier cutting all of these at one time. So I gotta be real careful to hold them in place or just do them all by themselves. Up and down, there we go. Now we have our triangles. Okay, just so we can see what we're doing here, we'll bring our template back. And we have, remember we have four pieces, even though you're only seeing three. We have to play a little pretend right now. There. And then we have our three, four, two inch ones. You know what would be fun to show you this? Um, okay, and then you have one here. So you can see that, whoop, Actually, we're gonna cut these in half to, uh, into three and three. So let me just pop those over and cut those. And at three and three. And then we have our three and three. Okay, so you can see all the pieces that we got out of that one six by six. Now, let's just think of it looking this way. What I wanted to do is use and here, I'm gonna pull out this one piece here. Now pretend that this isn't cut out of here, but say say this was one, and this was one pattern. We'll leave the blue there, and then we'll put, so if you have four sheets of paper, so if you cut four sheets of paper, one pattern, two pattern, three pattern, four pattern, you would have a variety of cards if you were making them together. Okay, but we're going to be using these different pieces on these cards. So I'm just gonna be all messy and just throw all my pieces together over to the side. And we're gonna work with first the two by five and a half. And why do I say that? Because I'm totally going to cheat on you because I have already done this card and I'm just going to show you how I put it together. So I already did this card and I used a Knight of Navy card base and I just put a white inside four by five and a quarter and what I did with this card is I cut a piece of balmy blue and it was two and a quarter by five and a quarter. And then I put that designer series paper, which I got messed up over in here. Where is it? 
oh, there it is. And what I did is I used the die that was in my Sentimental Park dies here. I'm not very good at organizing these things. I just kind of throw them in there, which maybe isn't the best thing to do. But what I did with this card, and I, I'll link to the video when I show this post because I did do this card before. I die cut out of this designer series paper and I put it on here, as you'll remember. And then I die cut this leaf in a dark navy and I inlaid that dark navy inside that. Oh, and I think I can show you that too because I have that done. So what I did, let's get all these little pieces. Next cards we're actually putting together. Like I said, I just used up all this paper and I love this paper. It worked so well with this technique of inlaying because once I inlaid that navy into there, you had a two-tone leaf and it popped off that designer series paper instead of getting lost on that designer series paper. And then I took that inside piece here that came out of the, the card and I put it on the inside of my card. And then I just took the flowers and I stamped them in Knight of Navy. And then I came over and I just punched them out. Just get a nice, seems to take me forever to do this. There we go. I popped out my flowers and I just scattered them. I'm gonna put this back in here. I just scattered them on wherever I wanted to put them. I could put one here. So I, I put those on and then I just put a label on here on my card. So you can see how it kind of went together. And then I just stamped on there and put the inside and a couple more flowers. And there was card number one all completed using this two by five and a half inch piece of the DSP. Okay, now on to actually making a card here. Okay, let's make this two and three quarters by two and three quarters. Now, I also tended to, um, not tended, I actually did do it blue because that's the color that, um, that some of the designer paper was. So we're using this two and three quarter by two and three quarter square of DSP. So let's find that piece here. Here is that piece that we cut. And what I did is I bordered it with, I bordered it on the blue. So I just took and put glue in the back of that. And I put the two and three quarter onto a three inch square. I had from the back of another designer series paper. On this card, I would probably look for a paper that had some blue in it, like right here. So if we were gonna stick to this, this came from another set, but what we're gonna do um, from another paper in there, but just using this piece here I'm gonna use this, okay? And that's two pieces of, where is that other piece? Okay, here. This is gonna go on here. Okay, so we've used our two and three quarter square of the DSP. Then I took a four by five and a quarter inch piece of balmy blue, and I used our stitched greenery die, and I just made a nice background. And then I just put that onto the front of a Knight of Navy. And that Knight of Navy was five and a half by eight and a half. And I scored it at four and a quarter so that I had a landscape card. Give it a little bit of pressure there. I can't believe I still don't have my wedding bands fixed yet. I look down and think, oh, I forgot my rings today. No, you forgot your rings for about a month now since you got them cut off your hand. Um, okay, so we've got that on there. And then I just took these two here. Now, of course, 
can I find that other one? Okay, pink, 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 pink. Oh, there's the little strip. No, I should have, I have one, two, three, four. Where did that little strip come from? The back of this one. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Ah, I've got a little pile of scraps over there. Okay, so we're gonna put this blue on here. Sometimes I'll, this one, I should have used adhesive for this because the glue takes a little bit longer to sit down, especially with something that's embossed. Okay, so sometimes I will come and use my grid paper to keep something straight on my because we are gonna wanna have this straight. So let's use our grid paper and say one, okay, what would we say? This is five and a half. So we would want, and this is a half, so take off five, so that would be five, take off a half, that's five, so go two and a half. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, oh, right in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right there, right in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna put it right there. I'm not sure if I have that, because it should be two. Five and a half, so be, wait, five and a half divided by two is two and a half. Yeah, so you kind of do have to go right at the middle of the two and a half. This won't be too hard to do here because I'm just meeting them up. Right, right where that block is like two and a half. Okay, there we've got a nice break there. And then we could put this like this. This looks nice with our sentiment going like here, or we could do this and we could make it square like that and do that. So you can do a, a lot of fun different things. Let's get some dimensionals and put some dimensionals on here. I kind of like the whole squared look, but um, maybe I'll do it different next time I do this because remember I have a lot of um i have a lot of paper now because you can make 16 cards if you cut four at one time if you want each card to have a different pattern on it especially if you're making like cards are such a nice gift to give to somebody when you're just like oh i want to just do something and people can always use cards the place where i do my classes in pittsburgh has the most the nicest manager and I gave him a valentine and told him you're all set for your wife to get a valentine now on valentine's day I said so don't forget so I have to remember to remind him next time I'm up there so here we are just using one of those dies that's in the sentimental park and we've got thanks for that and I'm going to finish I'm going to actually put Little glue under here getting a little brave there huh okay so we've got one card done and I'm gonna use some of these milky dots these came in the sentimentals these are a little bright though so I'm gonna use some of these what are called white they come in white petal pink night of navy and mango melody but I think I'm gonna use do you know what I'm not feeling these right now. These are a little too bright for me. So I think I'm just gonna set them aside a second and you'll come to my blog to find out the different thing I do with this card. So we've got this quick card here using this die that's in the sentimental park and using our two by three quarters inch square. Now let's go to this one, okay? So let's set this card aside, number two, um, and we're gonna pull out what I'm going to do with this one. Okay, I'm going to use the triangles. Where are they? Maybe I shouldn't have been so bold to make such a big mess over here. <laughs> okay, I have all my pieces here. Now, let me 
pull them back over here. You should have saw when I was getting ready for the lucky hand and I was making sure everybody got different ones. Okay, where is the... I want to use... Where are all the triangles? Okay, I want to use these two triangles, these mango ones. So it's under here. So don't be all messy like me. <laughs> okay, where can I put these? Let me pick them up. Ah, I know I'm going to... Okay, I'm going to just shove them back there again. Okay, what I did with these triangles is they... This was a nice bright color. So I'm going to put the triangles here in the corners of this mango card. And this mango card was 11 inches by four and a quarter and I scored it at five and a half. So what we're gonna do is use these pretty flowers as an accent here in the corners of our card, just by cutting that two and three quarters. Sometimes I need to look at it this way here so I can, so I'm getting the just an equal border on both sides. And I'm using glue, so I'm trying to keep it nice and straight. Okay, and then we'll put one up at the top. Here we go. And do the same thing up here. So we've got an accent on each of those corners and you can put them on the other corners, whichever corners you wanna do, but it is on the corners. Then I'm taking a piece from our con scalloped contours dies and we're going to use a stamp that we find in the petal park. Okay, so we're gonna be using this two-step stamping and then putting some flowers on here, okay? So what we're gonna do is, I saw the colors in here were mango, petal pink, and balmy blue, okay. And the green is shaded spruce, and it says so succulent, but what we're gonna do is stamp off with our, our shaded spruce. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna use the shaded spruce, and I wanna stamp it so that my so it goes, okay, that way. So I'm gonna ink up the like outline die of this two-step stamping. I find it easier. And I see I have it all covered. And I'm going to center it on my scalloped contour die. Just getting it put so that it's in within the stitching. So there was our first step using that outline die in shaded spruce. There we go. Now I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to use this fill in here. And what I'm going to do though to get to two different colors of the leaves is I'm going to go ahead and ink that up the same way I inked up the other one, making sure I got coverage everywhere. And what I'm gonna do, a technique called stamping off, okay? So I'm gonna stamp it on here, and I stamped some of the ink off, and then I'm gonna come back here and match it up. It doesn't have to be perfect, Cindy. It doesn't have to be perfect, Cindy. It doesn't have to be perfect, Cindy. And I don't think it's gonna be perfect. No, it doesn't, because right as I was looking, it's a little off down here, but we are just going with it aren't we? No, we're not. We're going to bring this over because I just saw it sitting there and we're going to do that all over again. Okay, where's the outline? Guys, I really am trying. I honestly am. But there we go. This is just for those of you who actually missed this, right? Like you couldn't just, okay, so this, I, I wanted it like this, right? Yeah, all right. Yes, so we're just doing full strength shaded spruce right there. And there we go. Now we're going to use the back of this one and we're going to do the stamping off again. So let's just
we have coverage there. So we come and stamp off. Remember, this is just scratch, okay? Just scratch, then we're gonna come back and put this. Now I'm gonna stand on my tippy toes and see. It's those little spindly ones that are getting me. Sometimes I wonder if they make these for them not to be perfect. It's not perfect again. I think it's just supposed to not be perfect. Ah, that's a little better. It's a little off here. It could be when I put this down. When you put these down, almost give them when they have that connect in here, like if you put, don't put it exactly in the right place, um, that could be what's doing it, which is most likely the case with that. So what we're gonna do is put that right here, but I am gonna play around with this one before I post this card for you. But what I wanted to show you here is I wanted to pull the colors out of the, of the, uh, in the designer series paper. And I'm gonna stamp using my, flower and the first thing you're going to want to do is always look at your punch now my punch goes this way okay so I know it's going to, so I'm going to want to stamp that way to make life a lot easier for myself so I'm going to stamp with the flower up towards the top I'm going to ink up with mango melody and I'm going to stamp it in mango melody I'm going to grab my chamois over here and I want to do it in also the petal pink. And these are also two-toned flowers, but I'm gonna cheat and just do them on white paper this time. Okay. There we go. And, and I think actually we aren't gonna cheat and we might just two-tone them. And then we're gonna do balmy blue. blue there so we've got the three colors in there and I'm wondering if I pull out this flower stamp and let's just it's one big circus here this morning okay put that whoop you know that's gonna okay so let's put this on a block and let's two-tone stamp in there, but stamping off as well. So let's go and do the mango and then stamp off. So simple to do. Look at that, is that cute? Okay. Now, let's do the petal pink. Stamp off. Now remember, these can be flowers that you can use again. Now this will be interesting, how if this one, how much ink comes off. Ooh, it does come off. I was thinking, what's the effect gonna be on that one, okay? Make sure you're cleaning off in between each of your stamps. This is a piece of scratch here I want to just stamp off. There we go. There. Is that so cute? I'm so glad I didn't cheat and just do the white flowers because that just showed you how fun that is to get those flowers two-toned. Okay, so now we're just gonna pop in. Now, you could have used your little cubes, your stamping up one inch cube ink pads, little spots, easily, and then you wouldn't have, you could have just done three different flowers. But since we are playing around, 
with 16 cards, why not have a bunch of flowers to do? And do you see how easy that was to make those all? And then using my left hand here, I have my little grandson and I wonder if he's gonna, his dad is ambidextrous. He can, you know, sports either side, left or right, is left-handed, but I was trying to watch my little guy to see if he's, okay, I have to get this a little bit so I can see it here, because that's the better way, because you need to use your, I need to use my right hand, okay? And then I have my blue flowers, okay. So now, what we could do with this card is you can see the peeking through of there, and we can pop up the different I had it written do, 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 do. where I was here I had a little template of how I wanted the flowers so I want the medium one up there the big one here and I'm gonna put the small one right here there we go so you've got a fun card there and then what I did here is I pulled out that it does have the poppy in it and that and I'm just gonna pop this probably down on this card but I'm not sure what I'm doing with this card yet so let's just say it's gonna be generic and I'll put something else in the inside but you know what I'm thinking you know I want to fix this so we're just gonna sit this one aside but that's your third card you could make using using your your two triangles cut from this one now we're gonna use this last one here Okay, and uh, I've got some pretties here. Um, we're gonna use the strip, and I'm gonna use this strip here, and I'm gonna just put this one and a quarter, one and a quarter by five and a half. I'm just gonna put that onto, oh, I love those polka dots in petal pink. I'm gonna be snipping off a tiny bit of that, so I'm just going to Put this onto here, putting the same border on the top and bottom. The glue is going to give me a little wiggle room, a little wiggle wiggle. There we go. And then I'm just going to snip off this little part here because it was cut to five and a half. And the design of this card, the um, embossed white that I put on this card is using our new Cane 3D embossing folder, Cane Weave. Yeah, it has the word weave in there. Once again, why am I using glue whenever I told you the glue takes time to, to glue down? Oh well. You just gotta get her done, as my dad says. Get her done. And that is the mantra I take now that I have three grandchildren under two. <laughs> and blessed to spend time with them, but the time that I'm not with them is the time I need to get her done. Okay, so then I just took um, Sweet Sorbet card base which was five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter on the eight and a half inch side. And then so when I made this five and a quarter by four, I also made this banner that goes across there. Not a banner, but like a, a band there. I made this one and a half because the designer series paper was one and a quarter. So we're just gonna put that on here. And then I'm gonna show you this really cool label that is, and you can put this wherever you want on here. You could put it right in the middle. You could put it down towards the bottom, which I might do that just to have a, and I'm seeing that it has just, a, needs shaved off just a tad. So I'm gonna come over. all over my there we go there we go and let me just do something over here real quick I ended up getting glue on my trimmer blade on my
got glue on my guillotine <laughs> because I used glue. That is one of the caveats of not using of not using glue. And I just saw there was a little little thing I couldn't get off there. Okay, this is the coolest die that's in the Central Bundle Park dies. This die. You have this die there. And then you have a big die here. Now remember the smaller die that I used on that first card. Now this bigger die is of course bigger. But the cool thing about it is when you die cut with this bigger die, it opens up right on these two sides here and you can slip in this sentiment. Is that super cool or what? There we go. Stick that right in there. In the all the little pieces there. And then stick this one into here. And you play around with it. Let them know who's boss here. And then you'll have this really two layered die with these flowers that hold that die in place. Though I do want to get that straight here. And I think it's just because I need to push it up on this side. But it is really cool. Pull that down. Pull this down a little bit here. There we go. We've got it, <clears throat> excuse me, perfect there. And I'm just going to put that onto that card. Isn't that pretty? Now let's stick a tiny bit of glue in there once we get it in place just a little bit and then make sure you've got it straight Cindy so that you don't want to move it there we go you have to stretch out the paper a little bit but it does fit in there nicely okay and then that's going to be popped up on there so let's just get some dimensionals here. There we go. Just put them right on the back here. Get those little backings off of there. And then just layer this petal pink right so you can see some of the pretty paper there. And it's about, I would say the middle there you go and the, that is our last card using this okay recap get ink out of the way <clears throat> recap is we took this six by six and we put it in our trimmer and we cut it off this half inch strip off the one side that left us with five and a half then we turned it and we cut two inches then we cut two and three quarters and that left us with one and a quarter then we took our two and three quarters and we cut it in half and we had two squares and one of the squares we cut off into the triangles. So if we look at this, we see this card was made with this one. This card is in the process of being finished once I fix my little thing there. Um, this one was made with these two triangles under here, and I'm gonna pop this up, but make sure you go back to my blog to see the pictures of this finished card. This one was made with the two and three quarter inch square and the die that's in the sentimental park. And then our last strip here, the two by five and a quarter, was used here on this card. So you got four cards out of one six by six. If you did it the way I did it, with four sheets of paper, you get 16 cards, different patterns, but certainly if you're on your first one and you're not concerned about making a lot, I was, and I wanted to show it off, so I cut four at one time, but you can just do one. So just think about how pretty if you did each one of these cards with just this pattern of paper, but you do have the versatility versatility of using four sheets if you want. So thanks for sticking around with me to see how to use this one sheet wonder with a six by six with the Regency Park DSP and our fun new pedal park with the pedal park punch 
and our sentimental park that has some really great, you'll see the different um, sentiments that you can build here with these different fonts here. It's really pretty. And it's got this two-step stamping that can go in each one of those, just like the two-step stamping we did with these flowers and these leaves. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for buzzing by, friends.